Okay. Hi, Matthias. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Let's How are you? Are. I'm very good indeed. Very good. And, and uh, I guess this is uh, Monday morning early for me. Um, and uh, just excited that uh, our movie, Army of Thieves, is the number one movie on Netflix. And uh, it's true. exciting. And congratulations to you, sir, for doing such an amazing job on that. Congratulations to you, sir, for trusting me. You know, like this is like, like you wrote it yesterday, like it's an army verse now, you know, like hashtag army verse. It's cool. It's cool. It's, it's really fun. cool. <laughs> yeah. And we have the animated series as well. So yeah. there is definitely, uh, definitely the gears are turning in the army verse to, you know, to continue to expand and uh, grow it. So, um, but, um, you know, is yeah, what were you going to say? Yes. Is there a word, like uh, I thought about this this morning, is there a word, is there a prequel? What is a prequel prequel before a prequel? Uh, prequel? Is, oh, a is double this, prequel? Is it a double prequel? That's cool. I, I like that idea. So like if we were to make a nut, like for instance, if we like made like Ralph's origin story, like that <laughs> As, be, that's a double prequel. Yeah, that's a double prequel. That's, that's like where a, the prequel, the, the sequels and the prequels are like going like this. Look, they're going like stretching back. That's cool. Drifters of the Dead. Drifters you know? of the Dead, which is one of my favorite movies. I love it. It takes place in London, I believe. <laughs> <It's> all <laughs> London based. Um, yeah, that's cool. It's cool to get so far away also where there's just no mention of zombies of any kind. There's like no, because that would be like pre-pre. So there would be really no, it would have of the dead in the title maybe, but there's no, you don't Nothing. know why. Maybe because he's, the life he, dr he drives is so dangerous, you know? It's like everything is so dangerous that it's of the dead, not because there's zombies in it or anything. Yes, yeah, just he because- He loves zombie movies. Yeah, or he has just like, you know, like a grandma that she's like just sitting the whole time somewhere in a room and it's just like heavily breathing, like, you know, <laughs> And that's the only thing that reminds him on a, she's a zombie, you know, yeah. that, uh, look at her, but she could be funny, you know, the grandma of Goose, of, of Rolfi, you know, Rolfi's grandma, they're together, you know, he takes care of her, this could be funny. This is he, good. And he learned everything from her, drifting and drifting. <laughs> yeah, she was an amazing, she invented drifting. She was <laughs> she drove <clears throat> only German cars, so there's a cool tie. Hey. Yeah, it's it's all about he loves BMWs. That's yeah, for he sure. Does. He seems yeah, to he love loves. BMWs. Yeah. Yeah. Is that now were you using a BMW? Was that like, was that your choice, or did the car people offer you a bunch of different cars, and you guys chose the BMW? No, we had a different car. We had we had different cars, but I knew that um, uh, Goose loved to drive like BMWs, and he never did that before in a sports drifting car like this. So we choose, of course, the golden. BMW, that was cool, you know. And he was yeah. like, I think this was one of his best days ever. He was like a child on the on the <laughs> now those guys were talking about they were like at an airport or something, or I don't know where they were doing their practicing at some sort of airstrip, or I don't yeah, know. It was it was a little airport out there, just like they had huge space of drifting space with these crazy drivers. So it was like a fun thing. And those guys were locals from Prague who did the who, who trained them. Yeah, they, they, these were local stunt guys and uh, professional um, drivers. Part of the Prague drifting community. That's yeah, it's, and it's a huge community. You know, it's I saw a lot of cars drifting in the streets of Prague while we were shooting this film. It's <laughs> hard on the cobblestones, I think, to uh, drift harder than classic <laughs> asphalt. Yeah, anyway. very adventurous. Makes them that much better. Well, um, when we were. Uh, I remember what well, just to talk a little bit about when we were making the movie and getting ready. And yeah. I remember talking about um, we had all these stunts to do and me saying that you should take Maddie, um, Matthew Brighetti over to uh, help you guys out um, with the stunts. And I was just wondering how that went when Matthew arrived and you guys started talking about um, doing this stunt work. How did that how did he work out for you? You know, um, because I watched you like every day on Army of the Dead, like how you talk to the, you know, to the stunt boys, to Damon. And uh, uh, this was like pretty exciting when it was about, you know, doing this and that and with the guns and with the, you know, 
when it was about the shooting. So I thought I was super happy when Matt came over. Thank you, by the way, that you did that because he was very American and I love that every crazy idea he was totally in at, from the first second. And he was like, okay, how can we make that possible? So um, because of Matt, we really, we, we have these fantastic action sequences. It's cool because he was like crazy and he operated the camera the whole time while shooting these scenes. So he jumped into the, into the van. He was in between Natalie and the two guys when, when they did the, when we did the vault stuff, but uh, he, re without Matt, the movie would not look like this. Well, so, and also, you know, Matt is, um, he, he looks like a little bit like a child, but he, yeah. in truth, um, I've been working with, he was in 300. And he, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, he's been, we've been, uh, he's been with us for a super long time. So uh, he's one of the, and also was a stuntman, you know, for a long, like, you know, he was doubled Rorschach, you know, like all, we're like when Rorschach jumps out the window, wow. the two story fall, that's yeah. him. And we had to do it a bunch of, times and uh we kick and also there's a shot uh in um when um, dan and Lori are fighting the thugs in the alley yeah They're, um i can't remember uh who does it but the, he gets kicked and flies and hits a dumpster like across the entire hits a dumpster and falls on his head and i remember doing we were throwing him into that dumpster like a bunch of times and i was it made me i was like yike like are we gonna like break him and yeah, you know, Dan was like, it's fine, it's very safe. I mean, it's very safe. I don't know how safe it was really, but, but yeah, so we've had him, he's been around part of the family for a long time. He actually worked on Eli. Well, Eli, I don't know if you know, in 300, Eli, yeah, I know the kid. Eli was punching the kid, right, in the beginning. And then um, Matt did also then was the stunt coordinator on Eli's thesis film at UCLA. So it was, oh, wow. it was cool that he, he was like a child and then he, and then also in Watchmen, you know, um, there's a scene where, I don't know if you know the movie very well, but where Eli, cause Eli plays the baby Rorschach, right? And really? Yeah, like that scene where he's like, you know, um, where the, the, the bullies are making fun of him on his way to school or whatever about his mom being a uh, prostitute. Um, and then he, and so he, hits the one kid with the books and then he climbs up the other one. That's Maddie that he, Correct. that he's fighting that plays like a high school kid in that movie. <laughs> yeah. So you, you always work with, yeah, you work like you have a huge family. Like, like uh, it's cool that you always work with uh, a lot of people. They stick together. You always count on them. It's great. It's cool. But you have that same experience, like your DP for yeah. instance, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, I, you know, I'm part of the family and it's the same uh, for you. It's, uh, it's cool. It's good to know, you know, it's because it's, and even now with Army today, like with the success, it's, it's cool to see that there are pe people like really thinking about what could be the next film or, or, or and anyway, I'm, I'm super excited to see the anime, you know? Yeah, I'm excited for you to see it too, because there's a lot of, you learn a lot about what's going on in the anime. You learn exactly. a lot about weird, some I have, weird, I, I, weird I have stuff. To, I have to ask you, um, of all the characters in Army of the Dead, why was Dieter the best character to focus on a prequel? Well, um, <clears throat> I've been talking about it a little bit, but um, I think, you know, we were so obsessed with the sort of mythology around the ring cycle and around the sort of the whole like doorway to another realm concept was just so obviously a Dieter, um, you know, he, I feel like he was the gatekeeper in a lot of ways, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it just made sense instantly that Dieter be the one that sort of shepherded us, you know, into a more expansive army universe. So yes, and thank you to Dieter and thank you to you for making the character so lovable and also so, um, you know, worthy, if you will, of sort of carrying the mantle of the, uh, the mythology forward. So that was great. So yes, that's why in my mind, uh, he was the correct, he was the correct guy, you know. Yep, thank you that you choose, that you choose this character. I think that was the right choice, to be honest. Um. I wonder if Dieter got another solo adventure. I'm reading this, sorry. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Peter got another solo adventure. Which AOTD character deserves to team up with? Well, I mean, really depends on how you do it because I think there's like a time loop version where anybody could. And then there's sort of the apparent chess pieces on the board, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, if just to talk, and this is by no means the movie because I don't want anyone to speculate though I know you will. Like imagine that Dieter, so we know Van Der Rohe is on his way to uh, Mexico City, bit by Zeus, um, apparently bit by Zeus on his way to Mexico City. These are, the, these are the pieces on the board. Dieter, when last we saw him, was being pulled back by Zeus himself into the, uh, into the hallway. Now there's two scenarios. Well, there's three possible. One, for whatever reason, Zeus and Dieter come to an understanding where Dieter does not get bit by Zeus or Zeus gets distracted or Dieter fights him off or something. Two, well, the least popular that Zeus just kills him that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the third scenario, or the, the next scenario being that Zeus turns Dieter to an alpha. Um, so there's three possibilities. Alpha Dieter, King Zombie Dieter, which is possible. Negotiated yeah. Freedom Dieter, also very possible. Or the saddest and most nihilistic ending <laughs> dead <laughs> Peter in the <laughs> outside the safe all three probably did happen just true to say. <laughs> just to say depending on what reality you're in all three happened so something to chew on yeah and then as Dieter would go forward the thing to think about would be like what is the timeline what is the corresponding timeline to now depending on what reality you're in, if Vandero is headed to Mexico City to find uh, Torrance, oh, a character from the animated series played by Christian Slater, um, then what, what is his goal? And then what would Dieter be doing? How much time does Dieter have? Is the world, if, because the real question is like, is the world going to fall based on Vandero's impending infection. Like, is Vandero formidable enough of a alpha zombie if he became one to devastate uh, Mexico City? Probably. I mean, he seems pretty, he seems like if he became an alpha, that would yeah. be pretty serious for, you know, anyway. So all things to think about and fun. This is like a huge, huge thing. This is like, um, did you, you know, it, when you are creative, yeah? And you were like, um, uh, where do you, where's like a source or what's the source of, uh, of your creativity? You know, when you're, when you be creative, when you have a good day of being, you wake up and you know, there is this little spark. Um, what do you do then? What, what's the source of that? Probably a Zoom with you. No. Um, <laughs> yes. But no. No, I don't know. I don't know exactly what, uh, you know, just like anything. I'm sure it's the same with you when you, when you are, um, you know, just um, sitting in front of the, the blank sheet of paper and you're drawing or writing, you know, just, just hope it, you know, it's like a, it's like a pinball machine. You just hope they all have ideas, you know, bounce correctly and don't go straight down through the through the flippers so i don't know no it's, it's a good question truly but i don't know i mean how about now how about you i mean i'll ask you a question um from a position that i don't understand but i certainly appreciate that you are clearly a master of like when you're acting in a scene do you find um like emotionally do you try, do you think about where you're going emotionally or do you like let the scene take you there? That's a good question. 
that's a really good question. On a day, like, you know, for example, when we did Army of the Dead, you know, we had these days were like super hot, like every day we had this crazy hot weather. And I knew that you have this arc of a character, you know, where you're coming from, where you have to go to, where you have to go to. But on a day, like, for example, an Army of uh, the, the Dead, um, when it was like hot and windy and I just focused particularly on that day and focused on my colleagues, you know, what they did, if they just like did everything the same or if we wanted to do the same or you needed us to do the same, same, or we had like a day when you said, Matthias, feel free. So I love to explore then, okay, um, is someone of the other colleagues sleeping on the day? So I could be, uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, can push his buttons or her buttons. So, and um, this makes, it's different energy in these scenes but it's important just to know where you're coming from and where you have to go to but in between everything is, is allowed except you as a director say oh, uh, do it one more time let's I want I want to have this and that oh so do you think also then so take to take it could change like you're yeah like, you know one maybe one take you're like just waiting to see what energy hits you and then another one you might have like okay I want to get this done in the scene yeah, or, or what, what we did, like when we said, you know, like, hey, we need first, we need to have the scene, but then <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Let's have a, let's do a crazy take and surprise everyone. That's okay. Cool. I've never yeah. done this, but I, I heard, I, I'm trying to think who does it. Like there's some, there's a famous director. I'm not sure who it is. I'm sure we'll find out in the chat when I mention it. Um, someone will say, but who does, always does one take where everyone does their dialogue but without saying anything they just express through their oh, wow. emotion the um all the things they're trying to say in the scene without words words it's interesting and, and then you but film that and then you have that always as like some sort of reaction shot or some sort of but imagine you have 10 actors in the scene like this is like <laughs> well you just have to do it yeah oh yeah no it's cool to do it at the um it's cool to do it at the end, I guess, um, just of the close-ups. But maybe you do it in the wide shot, too. That's cool. Everyone's just standing looking at each other. That's cool. That's like, cool. Yeah. You don't know how long. You don't, Normally, you know, you know how long. The, you know when. You, you know what I mean? Like, you know when. Like, probably I'd be like, cut. And you'd be like, oh, I hadn't finished. I was still in the middle of my day. Oh, hey, sorry. that was. Yeah. <laughs> it's heavy. Yeah. But, Zach, um, whatever <laughs> happened in the future, uh, when we are on a set together someday, can we please do that? I just want to see, please, can we just do like one take where you like, like you always did it, like we do rehearsals and stuff. And then you say, okay, let's start shooting. And we shoot one, two, <laughs> three takes. And then, it, and then you say, okay, I have a fantastic idea. You know what we will do now? I, I just, I just want to see I your face. Do one, nobody die. No, I don't want to see anyone. No, don't say your di lines, but just feel. There's a Richard Avedon, you know, the photographer, um, Richard Avedon, I think it's in the documentary, but I can't remember exactly, but like what he would say to the um, portrait, right? Like yeah. maybe taking a portrait of you. And remember, it was expensive to get, if you weren't a celebrity, you could get Avedon to take your portrait for a certain amount of money. And he yeah. would say, like, imagine that this is the last photograph to be taken of you before you die. But oh. then he would say, but then he would say, but I don't want you to express that in any way. Wow. And I was like, well, that's worth the amount of money, whatever you have to pay, just to get him to say that to you. Because uh, I like the second half where he's like, I don't want you to express that in any way. I just want you to sit there. But imagine that this, is, but also don't express that. <laughs> okay, I'm super confused. Maybe that's the look he wants. Maybe that's, the, yeah, but it's the same. Like, you know, don't think on a, you know, you know, now at this moment, but do not think uh, how a pink elephant would look like here now on, in this place. So it's the same like this, you know, it's, it's uh, but I love stuff like this. If you, if you need to uh, lose a comfort zone, we need to do that, you know, like, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It is we cool. It's probably, it's probably like slightly, um, or you do it in the, if everyone's stuck, you have, let's do one where no one says their lines and then like do another one after that. Zach, I have a question for us, for us, which I think is really funny. It's from, from the viewers. From here, yeah. Is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's a 
good question. Is Dieter secretly a Norse god? Um, is Dieter secretly a Norse god? Oh, you mean like, is he, yeah. Because because we learned, I, said, I was, I, did you see the clip I was sending you two days ago? The, yeah. The, yeah. And, and I, I didn't know that Ludwig or Dieter meant like, you know, uh, like a soldier or like a like a a guy who's fighting for the good or something but is but is Dieter like a Norse god I mean he looks to you know that's why you hired me he looks like a god I know very masculine very like muscular you know, yeah <laughs> very uh, like you know I, I did a, I did an extremely hard workout for that film and um But, uh, and I have this, you know, hair and uh, blue eyes, but it's, it could uh, be, it could be an easy reveal that, uh, that Dieter is, you know, one of I the you, you know, I've been to Paris a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and I've been to the Louvre and uh, in the Louvre, we had these, uh, uh, these uh, mythology, you know, you know because um, th these corps, what is it called? What's the word in English? Like, you know, like corps of, People, you know, like what is uh, yeah, made, made of, uh, oh, yeah, what, bus. What, a bus, a bus, yeah, um, bus. And there was a huge one, and it has like um, wings, and was very, you know, like a like a crazy bus. And I thought of me because there was no head, and I thought about okay, what if I would be this this god, but you know, <laughs> this body and <laughs> these wings? And I thought about you because I thought because you're so interested in, in all these uh, mythology stuff, you know, and. Uh, Yeah. I thought about you. So, well, I um, do like the intersection of Norse mythology and army. I think it's a, it's an interesting. It is clearly well established in the, yeah. in the world. So, who knows? Let's yeah. see what happens. I'm very open uh, to. Uh, well, I'm not open at all because I know the answers, but um, I'd like to pretend like I am. So that's fun for everyone. So they feel like you know. But, uh, <laughs> What about, uh, I have another question from the viewers. Yes. Okay. Um, well, here's one. Like, what do you do when you have a creative block? I love chopping wood, you know. I think it's always like, you know, when you have a creative block, it's always, it's always good to do something that is like, I read a, a book about Asian way of living and they uh, said, you know, why not being childish, you know? Why is it not, you know, why not going crazy on the street acting like a five-year-old child? You know, when, I, when I, I have a creative block, I do something really weird to find my way back into, you know, life that you that you are, have some expressions or impressions from, from other people when you do stuff that isn't, that isn't like correct. Or I ch chop wood, I love chopping wood. Sometimes it's very meditative, me medit is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you chop wood at home? I chop wood everywhere. You know, we had a place, even when we shot Army of Thieves outside of, of the studio, there was a place where everyone could chop wood and we had the fire going every day. So the team was standing around the fire and they were chopping wood. <laughs> well, yeah. I have to get you, uh, you know, I have a lot of axes, you know, that's like, uh, I know. Um, I, I have many axes and I do also appreciate chopping wood. So I'll have to get you an axe, special axe. Because uh, I have many special axes, and I'll have to get you one with some special, some special s words on it. You know, inspirational words. So not only are you chopping, but you can also look at the axe and feel like, yeah, you know, it, this that, is it, that it's yeah. the weapon of a Norse god. So it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh. <laughs> Nerd queens wanted to know how the locations. Uh, of the three safes were chosen, was it random or was there some special meaning to it? Well, I can tell you on one level that there certainly was special meaning, but on another production level, there's also, uh, what do you call it? The rigors of motion picture filmmaking that also have, the motion picture gods also have a hand in, the, yeah. in how movies made now. That is this, sick. Yeah, go ahead. No, we had, you know, it was like a very, it's a very boring thing. We had this empty factory in Old Bank and we, it was possible to build, you know, we were building like all the sets for the flashbacks, you know, with 
uh, Gwen in the market when she was like the kid. Uh, <laughs> then we had a lot of space to build the Valkyrie vault, the Rheingold vault, and the uh, um, secret vault. It was an old uh, Czech building, really mysterious, and uh, we loved it. So it was possible to to build everything in there. And we, we I think we were working for 10 days in that whole building, and we shot a lot of stuff there, flashbacks and everything. So was the um, the main bank heist set was that in there or was that somewhere else? No, th that was somewhere else. That was an opera. An opera house. Yeah, that that was an opera house. When you first see the bank outside, that's an old. Oh opera. no, I I mean the interiors yeah. where. Oh, yeah, that that was a true. That was a real bank. Oh, that real was bank. A... That's cool. In Prague. In Prague. And a working bank. It, no, it wasn't. It was everything was empty. Everything was like oh. these were like lo locations for even for other films. But yeah, but it looked great and uh, amazing. And it, yeah, the exterior was an opera. The exterior was an opera. Yeah. So where Brad smashes through the window and then down, that was out of the, one of the windows of the opera house. That's that's right. Yeah, that was one of the windows in the opera. And then, but in in all that stuff in front where you're running to try and get in the van. That's in, just in front of the opera house. That was that was the first day of shooting. The whole the whole sequence outside with the with the car and the tram, you know, and uh, all these people running out. These were the two first shooting days of the <laughs> right. entire movie, or of, of that sequence. Yeah, of the entire film. It oh the, my god, yeah. that's so insane! Had, yeah, we had like the first two days where like ones of the biggest. We were blocking the whole city. The 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 center city of Prague, everyone hated us. So that's cool. And, and and the good thing is there's a shot in the film when the police cars driving by, they were real because there was a real, like a big police um, thing on that day. And I just told my DP just like, okay, come on, come on, uh, uh, take, 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 take the, <laughs> take the camera, film it, film it. And he was filming like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and that's in the film, there was, uh, yeah. So we used cool. everything. It's production yeah. value. Production value. Massive. Someone okay. asked if that was you uh, riding the bicycle down the stairs. Of course, yeah, that was me. You know, hey, this is like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a really good bicycle rider. You know, I'm, I'm known for this, especially my friends. They're all like huge fans of, we have this little group and it's called like crazy riders. And uh, we love, you know, to jump from, <laughs> houses and drive you know crazy stairs and, and mountains no of course not I can remember when I talked to your wife on that day Debbie and I really loved that Debbie thought in first place like about well, you do, do you want to do this stuff and, and, and I said no and she was like oh thank god because it's like uh, uh, I will never forget that how Debbie reacted when it was like when when I said no of course not and she was like thank god thank god so uh no, I like also that the uh, one of my favorite things is that like, you know, because you're the director and the star, normally the director would be like, look, you know what, I, of course you can do this. I mean, there's no question whether you could, this would be me talking to you like, I know you can do it easily, but you understand that for insurance and just for a lot or whatever, <laughs> like, you know, also I have like the world's like, probably I just hired like this guy like the world's most extreme mountain biker who can do anything and I, and I don't want to say like this guy is like really incredible and like you know trust me you're gonna want this guy to be driving the bike because you're gonna look like insanely good um but I, I I wouldn't say that I would say instead like you know like obviously no yeah. would have zero problem doing this uh, but you know for insurance and you know we have that other scene we just can't risk it and you'd be like yeah of course I could do it, you're right. But I, and maybe it is better that we let the other guy do it. But because you're the director and the star, you're like, there's no guy to tell you, you'd be like, uh, should someone do this other than me? Cause uh, you know, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm waiting for someone to bring the guy over who's really gonna do this, you know, like, and they're like, no, here's the helmet, good luck. You know, I saw, I saw on your shot list, you have a guy who rides down the stairs on a bike. So, okay, yeah. ready to go. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do uh, it. Here's the helmet, Matthias. We were just doing what you said, so we're ready. 
<laughs> Good luck. So that's the last shot of the day. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, but I will never forget it when we did the location tour and these stairs were like really, you know, like this is like a very uh, favorite, famous spot in Prague. And uh, I, I saw the stairs and I thought, no, I will not do it. No. <laughs> no. And then we had to, and then they had to build the rig, you know, with uh, the, the bicycle rig. And they, you, they, they worked on that rig like so many times and changed it so many times. And I was like, no, I will not ride these stairs. No, thank you. And uh, <laughs> we wanted to make it happen. So, uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate the dedication. It looks great in the movie, by the way. So it I looks mean. fantastic. How about when you're running after the train? Oh, that was that was a uh, that was real, but it was like uh, because the train was like the slowest train in the world, but it looks really fast. So, so, and, and everyone, you know, when you know the train is so slow, and you know for sure I will catch the train. There is no, so I was just like running, <laughs> pretending with the arms, and at the end when I jumped on the train, you have a whole team like, <laughs> great, whatever, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was. The slowest train in the world <laughs> how is that but like was it because normally like in between the train tracks there's like the tie like you could hit the ties yeah. like did you have to run on the ties was there or was it gravel in the center how could you get your footing there to be honest you know if you and me would have to do the scene and you would be the director i knew you know because on the day we had like four hours of shooting that sequence and i looked in between the tracks and there were <laughs> these huge stones and they were like lying around everywhere. And I thought, okay, I will break my legs, you know, but we don't have time, we have to shoot that. So I just went on the tracks and put them, you know, what I found, I put them on the side and I was I started to run. That's, uh, wow. that's, you, that's a very, but you know, but really after that, my legs, they were like really fucked up. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Well, listen, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, concerned Matthias, uh, not only is Dieter uh, my favorite character, um uh in this film and in all films uh, but also uh you are an amazing director and an amazing friend and i thank you for this opportunity to uh, make a movie with you and i'm so glad that it's number one movie um in the world and uh like that and i just uh am excited to see the further adventures of Dieter and the further adventures of the army universe so thank you sir for your contributions to that, that they are greatly appreciated. Thank you, sir. You know, you will always be my friend. So cool, you know, you changed everything, you know that. And uh, uh, I'm so proud of you. You're a great, fantastic producer. It's so cool that we have, we, we made this together. And uh, anyway, you know, you're the best. And I, I don't have, you know, I love you with all my heart, you know. <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, ciao. Thank